Sean and I, we're part of the Sons of Thunder, as was you know, introduced earlier. We're two of four guys. Yeah. Uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, you know, we were all students at St. Thomas, and we really wanted to pursue greatness. We really wanted to find greatness in, in our faith, in our lives, and let, and let the Lord be the center of our lives. Uh, we, we wanted to pursue brotherhood, but we knew we couldn't do it alone. So we yep. wanted to get together and kind of live a life and invite guys into it. So that's what we've been doing. You know, we've had some, some talks, and we're, we have a podcast, and we just want to invite guys into what yep. you know what we're trying to live and you know into the faith essentially and that's kind of what we want to do with you guys today we want to invite you guys into our conversation our way of life what we're doing so right now it's lent it's lent we're in lent it's lent so i think you know a lot of people you know we, we we didn't eat meat yesterday right oh yeah and that's like for me that's like the hardest part it's uh-huh. you know you open your fridge and all you see are all it's the meat. meat options right you're like there's beef sticks and there's bacon and i'm like what can I eat? You know, like why, you know, so it's just like I'm just giving oh, them yeah. meat, right? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a big common misconception about giving things up, you know? Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. when I was in high school, I just, I mean, uh, my mom would ask me what I'm giving up, and yeah. I would just say the first thing that came to mind, you know, oh, chocolate. Oh, chocolate. giving up TV. I'm actually lactose you know? intolerant, I'll just give up chocolate. I'll, oh, yeah, I'll count the that. easy I mean, thing. It's the same thing, exactly. Oh, yeah, so, but with, with us at the Sons of Thunder, yeah. um, just planning this talk, we wanted to, just figure out the purpose of Lent, figure out the purpose of giving up things because as men, um, giving up things make us stronger. Mm-hmm. You know, we realize that we're dependent on someone else other than ourselves. I think that's a big deal, yeah. you know, a big yeah. thing. Men, as men, we think that we can do it all. We can do it all. Mm-hmm. But once we give up things, we realize our weakness, we realize our vulnerability. Absolutely. And through that, we self-reflect, mm-hmm. and we need to self-reflect. So that's kind of what we want to talk to, mm-hmm. to you guys mm-hmm. about today is self-reflection. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a big word, and um, that's kind of what we believe Lent should focus on. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of people think Lent is just an opportunity to give up something. So, so for me, for example, I chose to give up my mattress this year. So I'm, you know, I took my mattress off. I'm sleeping on my bed spring every night and you know it's kind of the question of okay if I went from Ash Wednesday to Easter without doing that okay great w- w- what did I gain you know what I mean I'm just saying okay I could say I did that good for me right yeah. but we believe there's a, a deeper reality within Lent and we kind of want to you know invite you guys into this opportunity right now uh, to, to self-reflect and to understand who you guys are how, how you've been made to be in relationship with God yeah. and pursue that um, I, and also, I don't know about you guys, but like Saturday morning after Friday in Lent is like the best. Like, what, oh, yeah. you, what, you had a, what, I had you a have beef this stick for you breakfast. Beef stick. That's awesome. It's like I can, you know, it's like Thursday, 11.58, you're like, ground beef. I can't, it's not Friday. You know what I mean? And then like Saturday morning, bacon, it's, it's the best, right? So Saturday yeah. morning, we're all here. And we, yeah, we want to just share with you guys kind of in this time about self-reflection, how to do that, and uh, yep. just kind of invite you into that. So Yeah, so I mean, kind of giving things up, people say social media... TV, all of these things, those things are great. Those things are perfect things. I mean, I gave up social media last year and I found so much more time to do other things. But the the hard part is filling that time, not with like, if I give up social media, I just watch more TV. You know, that's the common thing that most people do. So when I was in high school, I I really didn't know the purpose of Lent. I, I really just gave up things just for the sake of giving up. I, I really went through those motions and um, I was brought up with great, with great parents. I was, I was given a good Catholic education. Um, so I was given all these great things, but I never took it on as my own. I never took it on and fought for it as my own, like a man. You know? And until I got to high school, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what my desires were, who I wanted to be, because I was always trying to impress the people that I was surrounded with for, let's play basketball. I was always in trying, to, trying to impress my coaches. I was trying to impress my, my other, the other athletes. I was trying to make myself known on the court. I was trying to speak through the court. And, and in my social life, I was trying to be surrounded by people that were cool, by people that gave me higher status. 
And so I, I didn't really know myself and I was kind of lost in that. And until I got to college, um, everything got challenged for me. Everything was challenged and I was kind of just knocked on my teeth and I, I had to go way to the root of who I wanted to be because I had this choice. I could throw everything away and, and try to start a new life that was focused on pleasure and, and like subsequent happiness or I could fall more into who I wanted to be and, and try to fall into my desires and who I was striving to be and who I wanted to strive to be. And um, like I had, to, I had to figure out what I desired, what I wanted. And that's different for all of you guys. What I found out, what I desired was, was deepness. I wanted authenticity. I was sick of talking about basketball, sick of talking about girls. I hated the locker room talk. I knew that I was made for something deeper and something greater and something stronger. Because you see these men and the, the macho man, and, it's, and it's, it's just all on the outside. And I wanted to focus on my inside and build up my inside of who I was because I felt most strong when I was vulnerable, when I was talking to these other guys, when I was saying, hey man, I struggle with this. And he saying, oh, I struggle with that too. Let's dive into that. Let's try to work on this together. So I felt so much support when I started getting vulnerable, when I started diving into brotherhood, when I started realizing my desires and, and who I wanted to be. And so that starts with self-reflection. You need silence. So tying that into Lent, you, you need a little bit of silence because, because God is in everything. I mean, you hear that a lot. God is in everything. So he's in nothing. You know, before the existence of earth, God existed. So if you take everything out, God is still there. So if you empty out your mind, empty out everything that's going on, God's there. So I found by giving up social media, giving up my phone, um, I, I just invited silence into my life and that was probably the best thing I could have done because I just realized who I wanted to be. I mean, don't we all, don't we all wanna know who, what, the kind of people that we want to be, the kind of um, men that we want to be. And through that, through that leap of faith, it was so tough making that jump um, from a surface level life, um, living for immediate pleasure, living for um, just fun and, and immediate happiness and making that jump into that deep life. And that's where I met Eric, you know, one of my great friends. Um, I met Eric after that jump. You meet brothers that want to run after something with you. Yeah, I mean, so ultimately in our lives, there's so many distractions. There's a lot of things that distract us. And, yeah. you know, we, we, we fall into these pits of comparison or, you know, bits of temptation or, you know, we, we just find ourselves not living the life that we want to live, right? So, yeah. so Sean, when you went to college, you, you, you found that and you began to take it seriously. So I, I just kind of want to ask you, you know, yeah. kind of question your, your, your story a little bit about... Definitely. Um, so what was the specific surrender? You know, what was the opportunity that you had to encounter men? Like, where did you find that? I found that, um, I remember I got called on this retreat. I got called to go on this retreat like you guys are on right now. Uh, I got asked to go on this retreat by a young man. And I found a new brotherhood. I found new men that were running after something greater. Because I surrounded myself with, with dudes at the gym, you know, dudes playing basketball. And that's great. That's so fun. I played pickup basketball like five nights a week in college. And like, I don't regret it at all because it was so fun. But I made that jump to, to have deeper relationships with men, to be vulnerable. And, and it was scary. It was very tough. I remember um, just like sitting in my dorm alone, you know, and, and being like, okay, God, like I want this. I really desire this and it's trust. Yeah. And it takes a lot of trust. Yeah. So, do you guys have notebooks, pens, and things? Oh yeah, break them upstairs. Break them out. Break them out. We're gonna. Uh, I just kind of want just to title something, and then. So, it's okay if you don't have it. You know, it's, it's fine too. Just write but it on your hand. Essentially, we want to share our story with you guys because because we've we've sat in those seats. Like we we've been at your place in life, and this is the reason we kind of started this podcast and just started living this way is because we we were not being taught the things you guys were taught. We had to yeah. find it, and we're here to tell you that you know there's there's truth and there's and there's greatness that that awaits you. So. Uh, I can really relate to Sean in, in my story. When I was in high school, when I was your guys' age, uh, I, I was not raised Catholic. I actually just joined the Catholic Church three years ago when I was 
uh, at the University of St. Thomas. I got invited into the church by, by brotherhood, by men. And when I was in college, or high school, I was you know, going to youth groups. I was going on mission trips. I was a part of Bible study. It's probably very similar to what you guys are doing, you know, just you know, weeknights, hanging out with your friends. And, uh, but where, where I found myself, I was a lacrosse player. I was a swimmer. Um, I'd go to youth group, right? And I was in jazz band, playing the trumpet. And what I found is that I was never the same person at all of these different things. I would, I, you know, I'd go to youth group and I'd be one person, and then I'd go to swim practice and I'd be another person, and then to concerts or whatever, you know, jazz concerts. And I, I was never really living a life of integrity. I wasn't, you know, because I didn't know myself. I was just kind of, I was comparing myself. I was weighing my value and who I was based off of how others viewed me. So you know, what, what, what women I was talking to, what women I was being seen flirting with, or, you know, what guy friends I had, right? And deep down, I never felt like I deserved authentic friends. Deep yeah. down, I never really knew who I was, right? And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to hang out with these guys, even though they're not making me who I want to be. I'm just going to, because I want to be popular, I want to be seen, right? And I, and I wasn't able to let that go. So I, I was Christian. I believed in God. I was going to these Bible studies. I was a Protestant. And when I got to college, what I encountered uh, my sophomore year of college were these were these guys, just a group of dudes that were just running after something that they had something that I that I didn't have, and I saw that in them, and I was like, w w what do they have, and how do I how do I get that? And, and essentially, what it was was you know they knew themselves and they knew what they yeah. wanted and they they knew their identity in Christ in the Catholic Church. So, you know, a friend invited me to mass. I remember walking in. And I'm like, oh, what am I doing here? Like, this is crazy. And just like my heart's thumping. I'm like, I'm like, I'm not, I, didn't, I wasn't raised in this. Like, why am I here? And I, and I remember asking myself, why is the building so big, the music so beautiful, and the priest just dressed so nicely for this piece of bread? Like, what is that piece of bread? Right? And someone told me, like, oh, that's Jesus. That's, that's God. That's Jesus. I was like, what do you mean? That's, not, that's Jesus? What do you mean? Right? Are you kidding me? And, and, and I was like, okay, but I'm interested. Like, there's something that just had my interest, and I, and I needed to look into it. I needed to research it. So I found, yeah. you know, the history of the church, uh, the, the tradition of the sacraments, that I could take my faith in Jesus and be able to put it into these sacraments, into the church. So I ended up joining the church, and these guys, Sean was one of these guys back then during my sophomore year of college. They invited me on a retreat. Uh, and it was on this retreat that I had the opportunity to write down kind of all of these sins and, and write down all of these faults within myself. And I had the opportunity to sit in adoration and pray, f pray through all, all of these things. And the Lord revealed to me just, he's like, I I'm here to heal you. You know, all, all, those all those times that you hurt someone or you did something wrong or you're not proud of yourself. He wants to, he wants to reveal those things and, and heal us and, and, and bring us freedom in those things and, and essentially give us greatness, right? So all those things were preventing me from, from understanding who I was and, and living the life that I wanted to live. Um, but it I was encountering that. that brotherhood and not living it alone that has really helped me still live that life. So Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, I think what you said, um, just with self-reflection, um, what you said about vulnerability, vulnerability is very powerful. So, um, like, can you give us a tangible example about, like, because... When I was young, when I was in high school, when I was your guys' age, I thought all I had to do was tell the priest my sins. All I had to do, like, I, I could just get it off my back. Um, so what is the power of telling another brother um, what you're struggling with? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the power in that is if, you know, when you're first vulnerable, you give someone else the permission to be vulnerable themselves as well, right? So by coming to them and saying, hey, man, I'm, I'm struggling with this. I just need some help, you know. It's, it's, very, it's very taught in our culture that men are not vulnerable, that we don't share how we're hurting, we don't share what we're struggling with, right? Uh, but but that's, that's one of the first steps in, in, in creating and finding authentic brotherhood is, is finding yeah. guys that you want to run with and guys that you're excited about living life with um, and that encourage you to be who you want to be, right? But, the first, but it, in, in order to live who you want to be, you have to know first who you want to be, right? So yeah. again, Lent, an opportunity to, to give up certain things that are distracting us for us to understand who we are and where we're, and where we're going. So Definitely. does that answer the question? No, that's a, good, that's a good answer. So I think, yeah, it just all starts with self-reflection. You know, it all begins with self-reflection because we, we have to know who we are. We have to know what we are. So I want you guys to write down, um, do you guys have your pens? Who, who do I think I am? Yeah. Who am I? Who am I? Yeah. And, and this is going to be great for adoration. Um, you're going to be given time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, these are questions that I asked myself, mm -hmm. and I've found the answers to. Yeah. So who am I, and then who does God say that I am? So two, two different questions there. So who am I, question mark, and then who does God say that I am, question mark. All right. 
So two different things there that we want to yep. dive into. Um, yep. and, and then also give you three phrases, three, three, three truths that we want you guys to write down throughout as, as we speak here. Yep. We'll, we'll come to them as we go. Um, but essentially, it begins with that self-reflection. It begins with, with understanding who we are. And yeah. And, and the next is, who does God say I am? I mean, we hear all the time, I'm God's boy. I'm God's son. Um, but do you believe that? Do you believe that you are a son of God? We can look at our earthly fathers. They're great. But the heavenly father is perfect. We all have things that our earthly father has wounded us by. Whether, I mean, there are lots of examples, but our, earth, our heavenly father is perfect. So it, by saying that you're a son of God comes so much power, so much power behind that phrase. And it, who does God say I am? Who does he say I am? He, he says, you're my son, you know? What father would hand his son a rock when he asks for a loaf of bread? He's a good father. If you have these good desires, if, if you want to be strong in your faith, if you want good, holy friends, he's going to fulfill those desires. When, when I was asking these questions, I, I asked for a best friend. I was like, God, I don't have a best friend. And three months later, uh, my, my wife transferred to college and we became best friends. And, and, the ne- and then the next month, I met the best man in my wedding. So I had to make a leap of faith. I had to, to say, God, who do you say I am? Who do you, what do you want from me? Because I have all these desires. I have all these things I want to take to you. But I'm going to trust that you're going to give me good things. I'm going to bring, bring these desires. If you say, God, I want a Lamborghini, probably don't wait on that. Don't, if you want to l- win the lottery, don't, sell, don't buy stock or anything like that. <laughs> oh, that's finance, sorry. Um, finance guy. So who does God say I am? You know, who does he yeah. say I am? Yeah, and I think, I think the first, um, I, I guess, building on Father's talk this morning, he was talking about, the, you know, developing our conscience and making, making right decisions with, with the right judgment of the circumstance, you know. And it was, you know, when I was in high school, I, you know, I was not being taught those things. And you guys have the, the opportunity to, to learn that earlier than I did, right? Yeah. And, I, you know, I, I don't think I had the capacity to understand and to, to develop my conscience or, or to renew my mind. That's another term is that the renewal of the mind that, that the Lord wants to give us. Uh, it, it begins with that self-revelation. It begins with knowing yourself and, and understanding your identity in, in relation to yeah. God. So I, so I guess the question is, who does God say that I am, right? We can, in adoration, you guys can kind of answer that later and we'll give you some tidbits here. But I want you to write a phrase, a truth that we believe is that I am made for relationship with God, that, that we yeah. are made for relationship with him, that we are his sons and that, that he has come to set us free. He has come to heal us and that he says to each and every one of you, you are mine. You are mine. You are healed. You are free. And, 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 and he wants to open up a whole new life. When yeah. I joined the Catholic Church, like I said, I was, I was comparing myself. I, I, had no, I had really no good friends. I was jumping around between different friend groups every you know, six, eight months. Every year of my high school, I was a new, new friend group. I was trying to be all things to all these different people, but I actually never knew who I was. And, and God, God revealed to me, this is, this is who you are. And guys, I have to tell you, I've been on the greatest adventure of, of my life the last you know, almost three years of being a Catholic, being, being in the Catholic Church, because... I feel so free. I feel so yeah. free to be myself. And I have found men that I can, that I can be alive and with that. And I know you guys are hungry for that. And maybe, and maybe you don't know that. And maybe that's going to be revealed to you over time. But us as men, we're hungry. We're hungry for that greatness and we're made for that. Yeah. But what it begins with is that relationship with God. Yeah. And I, I think your example, I mean, that, that's due to our identity. You know, who does God say I am? You're finding your identity in God, in Christ, in things that are strong instead of these I mean, basketball, you know? I mean, I might break my leg in the championship game and we lose, and then it's over, you know? I find my identity in basketball, and now I can't play anymore. You know, that's going to be tough. I find my identity in my work, then I get fired. I find my identity in my girlfriend, and then we break up. God's never going to leave you. He has always existed and always will exist. When you find your identity, like you say, in something strong, in a rock, I mean, he's always going to be there. So Yeah, he, Sean, I, I would love to hear you talk a little bit about, because we're not asking you guys, you know, to stop playing basketball. We're not oh, asking yeah, you guys yeah, to yeah, stop yeah. hanging out. For, right? <laughs> so, I, Sean, I would love for you to talk about, you know, that passion with basketball, you know, measuring yeah. yourself based on how you play and, and how you're seen. But so 
so experiencing a new reality, a new life for yourself, but yep. still being able to invite others into that basket, you know, like that, that, that transformation. That yeah. yeah. Um, just, I mean, I bet the, I think the first thing transfer, I mean, transitioning to sports is mm -hmm. sports is sports are so great. Mm -hmm. They're, they're tangible ways that you can see your success and your improvement lifting weights. You can see how stronger you're getting. These are things that you can commit to and the thing that you need to do is reflect it on your faith life, reflect it on your life in Christ, reflect it on giving glory to God. You've been given all of these gifts. You've been given, I mean, you can do a bicycle kick, do it for God, do it for Jesus, you know? When you do a bicycle kick at the end of the game to win the game, I mean, say that was to give God glory. Um, don't do it for your own success because you'll find the shortness of it. I remember, um, finding my identity in basketball and then we lost the first round of playoffs and I was torn. I was like, what do I do? What do I need to do? And I was lost. But if I did it to give God glory, I can say I tried my best. I, I tried to give it my all. I gave it my all and I did it all for God. And I mean, it was, it was all for his glory, you know? Yeah. I, I love, I love w w when you shared about, um, you're still doing what what you're called to. You, know, you, yeah. you still love basketball. We're not, you know, yeah. you're, you're not leaving what you're passionate about, but you're inviting God into it. So, a, a little saying that I like to always always share is: the saints. You know, everyone thinks to be a saint, I have to do a really big thing. Right? Yeah, I write this like, down. You know, I have to, I have to, I have to, you know, write a book or or create an organization or you know, be like Mother Teresa and just go change Calcutta, right, and serve there. No, see, the saints did little things in big ways, right? So when you're eating your cereal in the morning. Right to be a saint, you would just invite God into that moment. I know that sounds silly, right? Eat those you're just, you're just you're like just eating my honey bunches of oats. All right, Lord, you're here. But the thing is, that's that's faith, and that's and that's living in our identity. Is that in every moment we're inviting God into who we are, right? Who He says we are, right? And then we're living life. We're living everyday life, and we're finding what we want, right? And the Lord's revealing that to us. And the thing is, you know, I could I could tell you guys. Hey, you're, you're, you're made for greatness. Hey, you, God loves you. You know, you're, you're a son of God. I can tell you all those things, and you can, you can know that in your head, but you won't actually feel that yeah. unless you yeah. take time, unless you take time to go sit in adoration, to go, you know, take time to pray, to, to spend time with, time with guys talking about this. So you can know these things, but you're not going to feel those things. You're not going to actually know them in every part of who you are, right? So again, it's bringing back to that Lent and opportunity to make space to make space and time for God and for him to reveal who you are. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's the key that we want you guys to take away. 10 minutes, you know? Like how, how often, I mean, if you have a test, are you guys gonna study? Yeah, you guys are gonna prepare. If you have a, a huge basketball game, a huge sports, I mean, soccer game, you're gonna practice. I mean, the religious life, Christianity, your relationship with God is built that same way through practice, through determination and confidence. If, you're, if you want to work out every day, there are going to be days when you don't want to work out. There's going to be days that you don't want to work out, but what do you do? You've committed to that. As, men, you, as a man, you've committed to that, and you're going to do it. You're going to grind your teeth and go, go get it. Apply that to the faith life. Apply that to your relationship with God grit your teeth because I mean there are definitely days that I I wake up and I I got nothing for God you know I got nothing I just sit there like uh, like dead weight you know and and that's what he calls you to do he wants he wants you to be authentically you and bring that to him yeah yeah so that first phrase I am made for relationship with God so everything that we kind of just shared kind of falls falls under that is that we're, we're made for relationship with him yeah. in every moment of our day and and he will reveal that to us if we spend time with him and, and we can tell you that but you won't know that until you actually go ask him and t later today in yeah. adoration really cool opportunity so the second thing we want yeah. you guys to write down is that I am made for greatness I am made for greatness so I want you guys to follow me here a little bit. All right, so, you know, there's this phrase, you guys were created with purpose, with the intention of greatness, right? So each, each and every one of you was created with a specific set of gifts and skills, you know, at basketball, 
I, I couldn't dunk. You know what I mean? Like, I can't, I can't do that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not a numbers guy. I'm not a finance guy like Sean is, right? We all have individual specific gifts, right? And those gifts are our are, are purpose in this world, right? So those things make us who we are. It's our purpose. But it's how we use those things that lead us to greatness, right? So if we make space for God and he reveals who we are, our purpose, right? And then we are made for greatness, that we're made to take all of those gifts into the world and, and, find, and find greatness in that and give greatness to the world. Yeah, I mean, don't sell yourself short. Don't settle with what you have now. God has amazing gifts for you that he's just waiting to give you, you know? He's waiting to bestow these gifts on you. I mean, I think back on my life all the gifts that I've been given, I don't deserve that. I don't deserve any of these things. But God has given me great gifts. And it's because I just, I thought of my desires, thought of what I wanted and gave it to God. And he's been blessing me ever since. And I can't thank him enough for that. Well, specifically in your story about, you know, you were living a certain way, right? And yeah. then you, you, you discovered something new. And you had to let go, you know, you do I mean, it's, it's cheesy, but you got to let go to let God in, you know, but like, yeah. so t tell me more about that specific or that, you know, that specific surrender, right? That, yeah. of, you know, that time when, when, when the Lord revealed that brotherhood and then you had a chance to choose yeah. it or not. It's just yeah. that, that control. I think what I struggle with most is just controlling everything. Mm -hmm. All, I mean, I want to have my hands on everything, you know, just be involved in every part of my life, you know? And, and that was the hardest part for me, just letting go, um, saying, hey, God, you know what's best for me. So I'm going to let you give me what you want to give me, and I'm going to be happy with it and trust. Yeah. yeah, and just letting go, letting go of that control. Yeah, I mean, for me, when I had joined the Catholic Church, I, you know, I was living a, a different life. I was involved with different, you know, Protestant organizations on campus that I was Catholic now and I wanted, you know, I was spending time with St. Paul's Outreach. It's a, it's a Catholic outreach on, on different university campuses. But I, I encountered that and I, and I had to leave, you know, I, I had to leave that life and live a new life. And it was hard. You know, I mean, I, yeah. I, I received a lot of pushback from a lot of different people questioning me and saying, why are you doing this? And, uh, and, but, it, but it was that risk. Right? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's always going to be a risk. It's always going to be a leap of faith that's going to, yeah, the, 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 the pursuit of greatness is, is a risk. It is. Right? So I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to live a comfortable life. I don't want to live a simple life. You know, I love rock climbing. I love sailing. I love the outdoors. You know, I love just going out and taking risks and inviting yeah. guys into that because it teaches us about our relationship with God and, and who we are and how we're made. And, and, and kind of what we're intended for, right? So that, so that greatness yeah. that I just said to you guys, so I am made for greatness, right? Mm -hmm. In order to get there, right, we, we need to be willing to take risks and kind of maybe give up the things that the Lord is calling us to give up. Maybe it's social media. Maybe that's something, right? Maybe that's something small. Maybe it's, hey, you know, this friend group that I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not becoming who I want to become with this friend group, right? You can still be in their lives, but you're, you know, if you're actively asking the Lord to provide something new, he's going to provide that for you guys. Yep. Right. And so just don't lose hope. Yeah. So I think what, what I want you guys to write down is what are my deepest desires? Like what, what do I desire? What are my passions? Um, yeah, just that question. And then reflect on that. Like where, what do you think God has in store for me? Yeah, yeah. So again, to take these things to adoration, take the, the Lord, yeah, is, the Lord is just going to reveal that to you. If you ask him, you have to, you have to ask him and yeah. he'll, he'll, yeah, it'll come out of who you are, yeah. right? Okay, and what's the last one? So what's the last one is uh, I deserve authentic brotherhood. Again, yes. this is kind of what I've talked about. Is In high school, I was just, I mean, this, this was my story. Maybe it's not your story. But I, like, again, I was hopping around between different yeah. friend groups. And I, was, I didn't know who I was supposed to be. And I didn't know what I wanted. Um, but deep down, I always felt like, okay, I need to, I need to hang out with this group of friends, right? Or, or I need to do this in order to be liked, right? And I never thought that I'd actually be happy. I never thought that, you know, I'd find guys, I would, I would find brotherhood, a fellowship, you know, a, you know, a group of hobbits from the Lord of the Rings going after something. That was a weird example. I can scratch that out. But I'm saying like a, a group of men that I called my brothers that I was running after, you know, that yep. I was excited about living life with, but men that understood me, men that listened to me, men that took time to say, hey, Eric, what's going on in your life? Yeah. You know, rather than just talking about March Madness, you know, what's, what's, what's going on? Like, how, how is your relationship with your girlfriend right now? How's, how, how's, time, how's your time with your family? Yeah. Who do you want to become, right? Yeah. Asking these, you know, deep questions. And at the end of the day, we deserve that. Yeah. Do not settle for anything less 
than, than the belief that I deserve authentic brotherhood because it will be given yeah. to you guys. It will, right? We just have to hold on to that promise and, and, and seek it out. Yeah, with authentic brotherhood, uh, I think um, the underlying thing that we both saw was love. Um, you guys might think that love is only for your family and your girlfriend, maybe down the road, but it's for men too, because love is willing the good of the other and not expecting anything in return. Um, so if you find it, if you look at your parents, you know, look at your dad, look at your mom, they want what's best for you and they don't expect anything in return. Maybe they want you to like talk to them. I know when I was in high school, my mom was like, just say four words to me, please. That's all I want. And I'll make you dinner or something like that. But it's, it's love, finding those men that actually want what's best for you. Because when I found myself at parties with my friends and they were smoking and drinking, they didn't want what's best for me. And I knew that. And when I found Eric, when I found other brothers that actually wanted to invest in me, wanted to say, Sean, hey, you're acting kind of weird today. What's going on? You know, that's amazing. That, that is the brotherhood that we were made for. That's the, the disciples. That's, ev- that's that brotherhood. And I think the first thing that you can do is find a brother, find a man that loves you, whether that be your dad or at school, if you have a youth minister or, I mean, reach out to us and we can talk to you. I mean, find uh, those men that will your good because you're going to surround yourself with men that you want to be. And if you surround yourself with men that are building you up, that are holding you accountable, that are loving you and caring for you, you are going to be the, I mean, the, the best version of yourself and you're going to be greater than you could ever imagine. Yeah. And so the last thing, the last message I want to give you guys is something that I never, never heard until two years ago. Um, you know, a lot of men feel like they don't have what it takes. And Sean and I, you know, we started this podcast, we started this thing that we're doing because we want to tell men that, that you guys have what it takes, right? So, so to tell yourself, I have what it takes. So just write that down. Another thing to write down yeah. is I have what it takes to do this is because, you know, a lot of people, you know, we, we see the celebrities or we see someone that uh, is doing so much good in the world, right? And it's like, oh, I'm just a kid from Stillwater, Minnesota. How am I, you know, how do I do that? But I have what it takes. I have, you know, you guys have what it takes to live this life and to, and to find this. Um, but where it begins is what Sean was saying is, you know, a good start is right here in this room, right? So who are some guys that you came here with, you know, and, and being able to ask them yeah. certain questions and starting friendships. Um, but it's finding people that have, that have those common interests. Uh, it's finding, it's finding those guys that, that are interested in you and they're asking you specific questions, but ultimately you're running after the Lord. You're, you're yeah. all running after healing and, and, and freedom, uh, because you see these guys doing it and you want to be a part of it. Cause that's what it was for me. And, you know, Again, I can tell you, you have what it takes, but unless you say, Lord, do I have what it takes? So later in adoration, ask, ask the Lord, do I have what it takes? And you, you, will, you will be consoled and you will be strengthened in that moment and saying, yes, I have what it takes to live this life. Yeah. So yeah. one thing we want you to write down is, I mean, just think of those, those men in your life. Mm-hmm. Who are those men in my life that, that can be brothers, that, can I, that I can be vulnerable? Because we're not telling you to be vulnerable with everyone. Exactly. You, you don't. You're not vulnerable with everyone. You, you have the, that tight-knit group of guys that, that you tell a lot of things to, a lot of things that you're struggling with, yeah. too. And, and so we want you to write down and think and brainstorm in adoration. Mm-hmm. Who are those men? Yeah. So at the end of the day, that's really all we have for you guys. We yeah. wanted to share with you our story. Um, and kind of, you know, we sat, we were in your shoes, we were in your seats and, and, and now we're, you know, six, seven years later, uh, you know, feeling transformed from, you know, from who I was in high school to who I am now, I yeah. am not the same man. I, I am, no. I am, I am made new. I'm transformed. I, my mind has been renewed. I've been healed from all these different, you know, struggles or, or faults that I saw in the past, in, the, in my past life. But yeah. I'm still, of course, fighting for, for greatness. I'm still, of course, fighting different struggles, but I have men to do that with yeah. as well. Um, so you guys are sons of the father. You guys, your identity lies in, in that relationship with God. That's that first thing is I am made for relationship. And this lens, we're, we're here to tell you guys that you have an opportunity to take time and to, to open up your heart, to open up space, to give up things that are preventing you from, from letting God in and to give him a chance. So, Amen. And so we have, I think, Austin, what we got? 10 minutes. Okay. So my my other thought was we got 10 minutes right now. You know, if I was in high school, I would love 
to just be able to ask guys like us questions. That was yeah. a little cocky, yeah, whatever. But what I'm saying <laughs> is, you know, w you know, we're gonna go back up there and have a Q and A time. You guys can write down questions. But, you know, it's us men in this room right now. Us to, what, what what questions do you guys have? Raise your hands. Anything? Anything. Eric, what did you? Oh. Yeah, my first mass was October 5th, 2015, and then I joined the church on April 24th, 2016. So about, I don't know, six months later? So, yeah. Yeah. Six months. Pretty cool. Awesome. Praise God. How do I play? Yeah, I mean, I think I don't want to be an aggressive father. I want to be a loving father. I want to be there for him, you know? Um, I just, I want him to make these choices for himself. Um, so I'm going to give him the truth. You know, the best gift that my parents gave me was a Catholic education. They, they, told, they taught me right from wrong. And then they kind of just let me choose. They let me choose um, Catholicism. And, and that was the choice that they really set me up to choose. Um, and that's kind of how I want to raise my son, you know. I want to be talking to him like, hey, this is why we don't do this. This is why we do do this. Um, so yeah, it's, I mean, it, parenting is going to take a long time, mm -hmm. and I won't have to have those conversations for like ten years. <laughs> so lucky me. <laughs> yeah. No, but I think I mean if that's an example of what we both experienced. Yeah. Is, is guys, no one wants to follow anyone that's not confident and that's not living a radical life. Yeah. Right. So essentially, if if we want people to follow us, if we if we want to pursue greatness, we have to we have to live it out every day. Yeah. You know, and we you know and I think but but it comes down to a choice, but there's a there's an inspiration that comes into each of us when we see someone doing something great and we want to do that as well. Yeah. Right? I wanna and the Lord has that for each and every one of yeah, us. Yeah, I think what I want to do for my son is just inspire him, you know? Because when I was in second grade um, I told my whole class, I was like, yeah, my daddy eats rocks. He's so big. And he is like, he's like 6'7", 315. So he's a big guy. And the teacher, um, as my mom was picking up me, he was like, yeah, um, Sean said that your husband eats rocks. <laughs> but I mean, that's how I saw my dad. You know, I, I saw him as this mountain, this protector of me. And that's how I want to be to my son. You know, I want to stay fit. I want to be the the protector and and have him come to me in times of need um so yeah well and again it begins in family it begins in the church and it's you know kind of what father was talking about family and church and i mean you guys don't have to listen to us you can go and try and yeah. find these things elsewhere in your life but we're here to tell you that we tried and and we couldn't find it i mean and, we, and the lord brought us back to something so much more and so much greater for ourselves and it revealed who we are and that's exciting because now i know who i am i'm not trying to be sean i'm not i'm not called yeah. to be sean i'm not called to be austin i'm called to be eric brownback and i'm supposed to be who mm -hmm. i am and there's a reason for that in the world right and there's a yeah. reason for each and every one of you and you guys can go and try and find that someplace else but i recommend you don't because we've done it and and, and the life is here in the church. The life is here with Christ. It's going to daily mass. It's being with your siblings and, and encouraging the faith and talking with your fellow brothers about your faith and running after something that's greater than yourself. Yeah, I mean, with society right now where it's, it's a, I mean, I feel like it's easier now more than ever to lose yourself, to not know who you are. I mean, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, you retweet, you can repost, you can do all these things, but are they your ideas? Compare yourself. You exactly. can compare yeah. yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and with all of these things, they're, they're distractions from who you are, you know? You go on Instagram and you see this guy that is very fit, he's got a great girlfriend, and, and then you look down on yourself. Mm -hmm. that, that's not okay. Mm -hmm. To compare is to despair, you know? And um, what we're telling you is that we've done that, we've tried that, I've compared. I mean, and, and you don't find any joy in that. You don't find any joy in that. I found my identity in basketball. I found my identity in girls. And, and that always sell, sold me short, you know? And, and I didn't find happiness. But where I find happiness is when I believe something and I show it mm -hmm. and I live it and I, and I feel fulfilled. Yeah. I've never been more happy um, living such an ordinary 
like boring life. Well, yeah, you know? <laughs> you're living in an, order, an ordinary life, but in an extraordinary way, yeah. right? And it's because we're inviting God, the king of the universe, right, into that everyday thing that we're doing. So another thing to write down, another question you guys can pray through and think through is, is where do I place my worth? Uh, where do I find myself? Uh, how do I value myself? Essentially, you know, where am I placing my identity right now that's not of God, right? And that's, and that's not... Uh, that, yeah, that's not of the Lord, and, and, and how is that leading me away from him? Um, you know, I can tell you myself, again, in my story, is that I was placing my worth, my value in my friends, and who I was being seen with, what women I was flirting with, how funny I was, uh, you know, how smart I could be. But, you know, I was trying to fake it. I was trying to fake it till yeah. I made it, you know what I mean? And, but, but until I actually sat down to understand who I was and gave space, gave, gave, gave time for God to reveal that to me, that's, that's when I knew. So if there's nothing else from you guys, let's uh, say a quick prayer, uh, and we'll send you upstairs. Thanks. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to speak to these men. Lord, I pray that you would come into their hearts in this time, that you would reveal who you've made them to be. Lord, you would reveal yourself this afternoon in adoration to them. Lord, I pray that they would place their identity in who they are and how they, they measure themselves in you, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would come and you would give them grace. You would give them grace to desire you. You would give them grace to desire freedom. You would give them grace to desire brotherhood. Um, essentially, Lord, I just pray that the Holy Spirit would come down in their hearts and that would set them free uh, and that you would renew their minds, you would renew their bodies, and that you would give them a life this day on this retreat, Lord Jesus, to, to know you and to love you um, and to give space to you. And uh, it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Mm-hmm.